Now suppose a college wanted to give, uh, to survey students, and since students are already divided up into classes, they just randomly select 10 classes and give the survey to all the students in each of those 10 classes. This is a sampling method called cluster sampling. And this is different than the quote, uh, the stratified sampling we saw earlier. Because in stratified sampling, remember we divided the population up into three groups and then randomly selected from inside each group. With cluster sampling, we're dividing our population up into, into groups. In this case, it's, uh, they're divided up into classes. And then, instead of randomly s choosing from inside each of these groups, we're going to select 10 of those groups and give the survey to all the students in those classes. So we're going to sample everyone from this class and everyone from this class and everyone from this class. So we're randomly selecting pockets, uh, and then sampling everyone inside that pocket. Uh, this is commonly done for things like, um, some, some, uh, some polling where people go door to door because it doesn't make sense to go to one house in one city and another house in another city or another neighborhood. Uh, so they'll choose a neighborhood and visit everyone inside of a neighborhood. So another, uh, option. So suppose to select a sample, a pollster selects every hundredth name in the phone book. So this is a method called systematic sampling. Systematic sampling. And the idea is you take a list and you choose every nth value in the list. In this case, we're taking every hundredth. So for example, if I had a bunch of information here, I could say I'm going to take the first one, skip to take the next one, skip to take the next one, skip to take the next one, and there is my sample. This kind of method, taking every third or every hundredth item, is called systematic sampling. So suppose a pollster is standing on a street, uh, corner and just interviews the first hundred people who happen to walk by and talk to him. This is a sampling method called convenience sampling because they're choosing whoever's convenient. This is bad sampling. There's absolutely no guarantee that the people that are selected are anywhere representative of the population, and convenience sampling like this should be avoided at all costs. Very similar, though, is this situation. A website has a survey asking readers to give their opinions on a tax proposal. What kind of sampling method are they using? This is called a voluntary response sample, uh, and it is in many ways similar or related to the convenience sample because it is a convenient sample. The different, the, the real key here is that the sample is volunteering to be part of the study. What tends to be ha happen is that it's skewed towards people who either have a really strong opinion, uh, on the matter or just have way too much time on their hands and enjoy filling out surveys. So this, again, tends to be a bad method for, uh, choosing a sample.